Hey, what is up, Grieve Nation? As you probably guessed by the title, this is the first of a new series that I'm starting of tips and tricks for each operator in the game, breaking down how to get the best from them and assist you in winning more matches. As the metas have shifted, some operators don't really play the way that they used to, so we're going to break them down, kicking off with this video focusing on Glaz. So Glaz used to barely ever get picked. In this game, he's never really had much of a solid role. As a sniper, you would think the logical way to utilise him would be to sit far away and pick people off from like a nearby rooftop or a building, but sadly Siege doesn't offer much opportunity for this sort of play. You would find more often than not that Glaz would be outsniped by defenders all of the time. With the peeker's advantage being what it is, as a defender you could stick your head out of the window and land shots onto Glaz before he'd even seen you. This was especially so way back when the real sniper rifle in the game was Smoke and Sledge's SMG-11 with an ACOG. Times have changed however, and the devs saw fit to buff him and increased his damage and reduce his recoil so that he could chain consecutive shots together. This didn't really alter his pick rate though. After all, at some point in the game there is a very high chance of him being forced to get up close and personal and it was in these situations that he would get outgunned by anyone with an assault rifle. In a nutshell, he wasn't great at range and he wasn't too great up close. Was he awful? No, not really. You could play with him and achieve reasonable results, but why bother when you could take an operator like Ash with her 5 speed and tiny hitbox, coupled with some pretty immense guns and a gadget that could benefit the team. So with the pick rate staying so low, the devs went full hog and buffed the hell out of Glass by adding his thermal scope. I say thermal scope, but the fact that it doesn't pick up heat of teammates or even the hostage means it's more of a smart scope. But either way, this completely reinvented Glaz and in turn offered a huge buff to smoke grenades that prior to Glaz had no real place in the game. With his hard kicking rifle and smart scope, Glaz was for the first time able to push up to doorways and windows after throwing a smoke grenade and literally see people through the smoke with them having nothing to counter him other than blindly firing into the smoke or hiding. Neither of these were particularly effective as if you were blind firing, Glaz would normally have taken your head off in half a second and trying to hide when surrounded by smoke, you're a little unsure as to whether your ass is still sticking out from behind that cover. Due to Glaz's pick rate in the Pro League absolutely skyrocketing, we saw a recent nerf in which his damage was reduced and his recoil was increased. Both of these pretty much undoing the changes that we saw in Season 4's mid-season reinforcements. The big question now is how viable is he? Is he usable? I'm going to be completely straight with you. Hell yeah he is. This guy is still right up there and can be an absolute menace to defending teams. He still has his three smoke grenades that he carries, which I am really surprised with as I fully expected that he was going to lose these to encourage more teamwork. But instead, Ash and Thermite lost their smokes and gained flashbangs, and instead Jackal and Fuse gained them, which is a really odd decision as neither of these operators would ever have any need to be pushing into the building with Glaz, and are therefore not going to be any use. If you were pushing the dirt tunnel of Clubhouse for example, Fuse is going to be upstairs in the kitchen deploying his cluster charges, and Jackal will probably be near him clearing out roamers. So this was a really strange decision, and I didn't get it at all. Perhaps the devs figured the pros don't use these operators, so it wouldn't really affect anything other than nerfing Glaz. With this in mind, Glaz has three smokes, and this can limit him if you throw them stupidly, and they get taken out by Jaegers or something like that. So let's break down the best method that I have found to use Glaz. At the beginning of a round, his smart scope can give you a massive advantage over spawn peekers. By carefully approaching the building, by jiggle peeking from behind cover while looking at windows, you will quickly see if someone has stood at the window by the bright yellow glow. Even if you don't land the kill, landing just a bullet or two into the defender will usually be enough to push them away from the window, allowing you to push up to the building. Obviously, you do want to do this reasonably quickly and ranked as you are limited by the time. I personally then take this opportunity to drone once I am in a reasonably safe place like the roof. This can allow me to either walk teammates towards the site, or in turn have a look around to find out where the defensive team have pushed to. Finding all three Jaeger devices and what windows they are near can be a huge benefit as well, as if you know the location, you won't go wasting your smoke grenades later in the round. If there is a Jaeger device on the window that you're trying to push, 
Don't throw the smoke grenade in through the window. Instead, put it just on the outside, and you can stand there in the smoke and have a good look through without them clearly being able to see you. Following this, you kind of have two options. You can either try and push into the building and in turn the site, clearing people out as you go, or instead, just lock an area down. Glass works best when he has long, clear lines of sight. A perfect example of this will be on Cafe. The double window outside of the reading room can allow you to look all the way through to the machine room, stopping rotations and movement, whether the defenders are on this site or not. Roamers often move through the machine room to swap which set of stairs that they're at, or as I mentioned earlier, the dirt tunnel on Clubhouse, as you can see here, is where Glass really shines. Even if he doesn't do too much there, just letting his presence known automatically cuts the room in half and stops people from moving around. Now don't get me wrong, Glaz is still a pretty good point man when used with his smokes, as he can have a good look through the front door of objectives, or just stand at the window looking in, but he can be left open to flanks, so it does help to pair up with someone and have them covering your back as you will have your smokes and not a claymore. If you don't have anyone with you, or if you're pushing into somewhere where there are two separate ways you could be getting shot from, it doesn't hurt to throw a smoke at both of them, and then use the smoke as cover as it's intended. When it comes to his rifle, my personal preference, as you can see from the majority of these clips, if not all of them, is the reflex scope. As the pointed arrow is nice and clear, whereas the little red dot from the hollow style sight can often be difficult to see exactly where it's placed when it's over the bright yellow operators. Now I know that sounds odd, but it does tend to disappear for me. I just find it difficult to see at times. Another really viable option is to actually run him with no sight attached at all. He'll obviously still retain his thermal scope, but he won't have one of the reticles, and instead just has the little green dot from the iron sights. This is a surprisingly good sight, as there's very little obstruction to your view. So for quite a long period of time, it only took Glass 5 shots to destroy a castle barricade, but that went up to 12 shots, which is actually a full mag, and then one extra bullet. It can however be used in a really, really cheeky way. Um, you open up a few holes in the castle barricade, and look through the door using it as cover. Being able to look through these little holes just for that yellow glow can give you a huge advantage, especially later in rounds when bullets have been flung around the map, as you can sometimes even see yellow shining through individual holes that are in the walls, and that can prompt you to shoot and get the wall bang. I personally like to run glass with a suppressor, as very often at range you can shoot through windows, uh, and then the wall behind to get a good look through the map, and defenders won't hear the shots or get notified that the shots are whizzing around near them. In this clip that you can see here, for some reason my game capture card kept stuttering. I don't know why, I think it was something wrong with the software at the time. But um, I was shooting at guys from a really long distance and they had no idea that bullets were just whizzing past them. This allowed me to get so many cheeky kills, even after missing several consecutive shots at the beginning. When the defenders can't hear that bullets are whizzing around, it can give them a false sense of security in their respective room, allowing you to just take their head off. If the defending team know that a glass is on the attackers, they're going to be a little bit more reluctant to peek. If they don't know that you're there due to the suppressor, you can wreak absolute havoc. Glass's destructibility can be a huge advantage, creating new lines of sight and cutting off rotations as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's very easy to tear through all of his ammo though. If you get too carried away and start destroying all of the walls, when it comes time to push in, you'll realise that you've just got your pistol ammo left, so do be careful about that. I find that I usually sit on the outside of the map for like the first minute or so opening these lines of sight, just trying to get an early pick onto people moving around or still setting up. You'll find that in the first 30 seconds of the round, people are still running around putting out ADSs or reinforcing walls, picking up rook armor, so it does help to just open up a couple of windows and see what's going on. After the first minute, your team will often have given some call outs and you can better direct your attention. If someone's holding the pixel peak on the server room of Canal, you can position yourself to throw a smoke and be in position to challenge them. Pushing into hallways, sitting on windows, there is no doubt that Glass is a really strong operator. When up close and personal is where he struggles a little right now as you need to make your shots count. If you don't have smoke grenades left, you can be at a massive disadvantage when you are close to defenders as their fire rate will often land a rogue bullet to your head before you've managed to fire the three shots to kill someone. Glass is always going to excel on the map presidential plane, certainly if you play smart and watch the runouts, as people running through the plane and coming to doorways to peek really stand out. Coupled with the ability of being the only player in the game that can actually shoot through the plane's windows, this really does make it his map. One really fun aspect of Glass and his smoke grenades is you don't even need to play him on this map 
to have people worried that he's nearby. Throw some smoke grenades around and people will be running for cover. If you play smart and use glass to either support team members by cutting down rotations or work as a bit of a point man having teammates throw smokes for you and then cover your flanks, this guy can be really, really effective and almost a little bit too easy to play. What do you guys think though? Do you enjoy playing as Glaz? Do you still think that he's overpowered or is he about right now? After all, he doesn't really have a counter other than not peeking him or spraying wildly into the clouds of smoke. But does he need one? What do you find is the best way to use him? Let's get some conversations started down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. And if you don't already, make sure to subscribe. I just want to take a quick moment to say hi to all of my new influx of subs and say a huge thanks to those of you that have been around here for a while supporting me. It really does mean a lot. Make sure to vote for the operators you like to see in the future. And until next time, guys, stay reckless and relentless.